Welcome guys to episode 2 of F1 2019 driver ratings where today we're going to rate the drivers based on qualifying and the race from the 2019 Singapore Grand Prix and look at just who had a good Singapore Grand Prix and who really did fail to meet expectations and also look at a couple drivers who completely forgot to use their brain I'm sure you know who I'm talking about but if you want to find out from me who did well and not so well at the Singapore Grand Prix of 2019, then make sure to check out this video. So let's first start off with Mercedes. Now coming into Singapore, they were expecting to be very strong and really go for the race win, but it never really materialised. First off for Lewis Hamilton in qualifying, I think he was surprised that Ferrari was so quick, but I do think that Lewis Hamilton... Definitely in Q3 in his two runs could have done better and could have put up a slightly better fight against Ferrari and Charles Leclerc in the fight for pole position. But then we come to the race where Lewis Hamilton was very close behind Charles Leclerc but was screwed over by his own team as they left him out way too long and that really did eliminate any chance of a race win and even a podium finish. And I actually thought Lewis was driving very well in the race, but again, he was screwed over by his team. So overall for Singapore, I'm going to give Lewis a 7 out of 10. Meanwhile for Valtteri Bottas, he had a meh kind of weekend. First of all, in qualifying, he was miles off his teammate in terms of pace and in terms of position. It just wasn't good enough. Then in the race, he was actually looking a lot better, but then he got james And you know what I mean by that? just after his first pit stop to allow Lewis Hamilton to come out ahead and after that he couldn't keep up and fight for the podium with his teammate Lewis Hamilton and because of that I'm going to give Valtteri a 5 out of 10 but we do have to say that this team has got to slightly now start stepping it up because Ferrari have massively improved and Mercedes are not as clinical at the moment as they were earlier on in 2019 for Ferrari and their drivers, it was an absolutely brilliant weekend in Singapore, mainly because the results they got were so unexpected and unexpectedly great. And the two drivers absolutely contributed to that. First off, Sebastian Vettel. He did have a good weekend. In qualifying, he could have done more to get pole position or at least get onto the front row because, of course, after his first very good run in Q3, his second run, he did not improve his time and lost out on a front row start. But then in the race, after getting undercutted past his teammate Charles Leclerc, he did exactly what he needed to do to win the race by passing the midfield cars that are still not pit and then maintain the lead. But because Sebastian Vettel, let's be honest, I don't think would have won the race without that undercut past his teammate, I'm going to give Sebastian a 7 out of 10, which is going to be lower than what Charles Leclerc will get. And Leclerc for me gets an 8 out of 10 because in qualifying, he got pole position. It was very unexpected and his lap was so good and it could have been even better because he did make a couple errors on his qualifying lap. And then in the race, I thought he drove so, so well, but was really, in terms of his own individual result, he was screwed over by Ferrari. But overall for the team, of course, it was a great result getting a 1-2 finish. But Charles Leclerc was, for me, the better driver in qualifying and the race combined than Sebastian Vettel. And Charles Leclerc again gets an 8 out of 10. But after Ferrari's new upgrades, they absolutely now look like a very strong outfit going forward until the end of the season. In a similar way to Mercedes, the weekend in Singapore just did not live up to expectations, but for Red Bull. First off for Max Verstappen, he was coming to Singapore hoping to fight for victory again like he did at the Hungarian Grand Prix, a track which is similar, but that never really happened. In qualifying, he qualified in P4, which by his own admittance was a disappointing position. And then in the race, he got P3, but his pace wasn't exactly special. And because of the not so great weekend he had, he gets a 5 out of 10. But Alex Alba for me gets a 3 out of 10 because Alex for me was just not close enough to Max Verstappen. He was too far away in terms of lap time. I know it was his first ever time in an F1 car around Singapore or around Singapore in general. But he should have been closer to Max Verstappen at certain points during the weekend. And if he had been closer, maybe he could have contended for a podium alongside Max Verstappen as well. 
but he just didn't do that. And at times, he wasn't even faster than the upper midfield runners. So for me, Albon gets a three. It was not good enough, and he has to improve. And the sad reality now for Red Bull is that because Ferrari have massively improved, getting a race win for Red Bull is going to be very difficult now. But now let's go into that midfield and start off with Renault. Now, both drivers didn't have the cleanest weekend, but I think they both did do mostly well. First off for Daniel Ricciardo in qualifying, he did very well, but of course got disqualified for exceeding the MG UK limit. And in the race, even though he could have possibly avoided contact with Antonio Giovinazzi, his drive up to that point was so good. And because of all that, Daniel Ricciardo gets a 6 out of 10. But for Nico Hulkenberg, of course, he gets a 5 out of 10. Because, one, he wasn't quite as quick as Daniel Ricciardo, even though Daniel in the race was starting from the back. And also, he caused the lap 1 contact of Carlos Sainz. And if he didn't do that, his result actually could have been very good, but it wasn't quite as good as it should be because of the contact he caused. So Nico gets a 5. But you have to say for Renault as a team, again, Singapore was a big missed opportunity. McLaren's race in Singapore was not all that smooth, but it was a good weekend for both drivers. First off, Carlos Sainz, you have to say he did the best he could with the car he was given. In qualifying, he was best of the rest. And in the race, after being hit out early on by Nico Hülkenberg, after the safety car came out, I think for the third time, Carlos did pretty well to finish in P12. And if he didn't get hit by Hülkenberg at turn 5 on the first lap, I think Carlos Sainz absolutely would have finished at the front of the midfield. So he gets a 7 out of 10, but Lando gets a 5 out of 10. The reason he gets a 5 is... It's because one, in qualifying by his own admittance, he did not do enough to qualify right there with Carlos Sainz. But in the race, he did have a good race. By being able to comfortably, by being able to maintain P7 in the Grand Prix. So he gets a 5 out of 10. The reason it's not higher is because, again, by his own admittance, qualifying was not good enough. But if you actually look at 2019, you have to say this partnership at McLaren is one of the most consistent in Formula 1. It was a mixed bag at Alpha with a car that was not doing that well compared to other races, but one of their drivers did have a good weekend. That driver being Antonio Giovinazzi, who in qualifying I think did pretty well to out-qualify teammate Kimi Raikkonen and B in the top 10 after Ricardo and Sergio Perez got their penalties. And then in the race, at one point, he was actually leading the race. I know it was only because he hadn't pitted yet, but his pace on the medium compound was so, so strong. And was quite frankly unlucky when he was hit by Daniel Ricciardo. And that did affect, I think, his race result, but still a great drive. And he gets a 7 out of 10. Kimi, though, only gets a 5 because, one, he was outqualified by his teammate. And, of course, for Kimi Raikkonen, considering how great he is, that can't quite be accepted at his current stage of his career. But then in the race, he did okay, but it wasn't quite as good as his teammate. Leading to a pretty meh weekend, so he gets a 5 out of 10. Good to see, though, a race where Alpha actually got the best out of their car with one of their drivers. In Singapore, Haas basically had one driver in their car as the other was basically non-existent. First up for Kevin Magnussen, he qualified in a not so great position in P14, but then went on to have, up until the late points of the Grand Prix, a very good Singapore Grand Prix. As for plenty of times during the race, he was actually running in P8, a position that the Haas car around Singapore is not usually supposed to be in. But then it all fell away at the end, not because the Haas couldn't look after its tyres, but because of a plastic bag. It's just one of those seasons, I guess, for this team. But getting on to the cookbook master himself, Roman Grosjean, he had another absolutely cataclysmic weekend in the Haas car. Qualifying was basically a no-show, and in the race, at times, he wasn't looking too bad, but then put Russell in the wall. And he was very lucky not to get a penalty for that, and because of that entire weekend, Roman gets a 1 out of 10. It truly is a mystery as to why Roman Grosjean is at Haas for 2020. 
After a disappointing result in Italy for Toro Rosso, they bounced back with a good one in Singapore. But it came for a driver that is not notoriously that great around this circuit in Pierre Gasly. Who had a good starting position in P11 and started on the hard compound tyres and that proved to really help his race result later on. As even for himself at one point in the Grand Prix he was running in second place in a Toro Rosso and eventually after pitting and the safety cars came through the field and almost finished in P7 but ended up in P8. And it is the first time since Pierre Gasly went back to Toro Rosso that he has outperformed his teammate Daniel Kvyat. So for that, he gets a 6 out of 10. Daniel, though, in a similar way to Romain Grosjean, had a pretty non-existent weekend. In qualifying, he was miles behind his teammate and was quite frankly poor. And then in the race, he didn't really have any real pace. And when trying to pass Kimi Raikkonen, launched it from miles back at turn 1 and took Kimi out of the race. The only reason Daniel from me will get a 2 instead of Roman who had a similar weekend getting a 1 is because what Daniel did for me was not as bad. But with his chances of getting a Red Bull season in 2020 now over it was definitely a disappointing weekend for Daniel. Hopefully though he gets it together this weekend at his home race in Russia. And the final midfield team is Racing Point who could have had absolutely a better weekend if only the drivers had not made the errors they did. First off Sergio Perez of course crashing in practice 3 that caused him to take on a new gearbox. And if he didn't have to take on that new gearbox Sergio Perez might have been able to fight with Lando Norris and maybe at the front of the midfield. But he ended up having a reliability issue anyway, but for his drive in qualifying in the race, I'm going to give Sergio a 6 out of 10 because considering Racing Point's history at this track, it wasn't too bad. Lance Stroll though went back to the bad Lance Stroll as he wasn't really competitive in the weekend. In qualifying, he did what he usually did and gets knocked out in Q1 and then in the race, even though at one point he was running I believe in the top 5, his pace was not quite good enough to really be a point scorer at the end of the day. And then topped it off by hitting the wall at turn 17 and that caused him a puncture and ended his race. Lance gets a 2 for Singapore. But after their new upgrades I think absolutely this team will go better in Russia. A track they've always gone better at than Singapore. And last of all of course is Williams now. Of course we don't really pay attention to what Williams do. So I'm going to give both drivers a 5 because I don't really think we can tell how good they actually drove in a car that is still miles off the pace. But those are my driver ratings for all the drivers at the 2019 Singapore Grand Prix. What about another person's opinion? Well let me now welcome in Mike from F1 Fanatics to give his view on the drivers and how they did in Singapore. Hi guys, I'm Mike from F1 Fanatics and thank you Trazza for having us on and doing this shared collaboration of driver ratings. Appreciate you uh, giving us the time to come on here and uh, yeah, hope we enjoy our driver ratings and we're interesting to see how we uh, differ in views. So um, starting off with the order, we have Mercedes coming in first. I'm going to go with Hamilton and Bottas, both a 7 out of 10. I believe both were affected by the strategy calls uh, by Mercedes, but them in themselves drove pretty solid races. So 7 out of 10s are kind of my solid benchmark within this. And so, yeah, I don't think it was anything driver faults. Neither of them drove beyond that kind of average rating. Um, both were hindered by that strategy call. So 7 out of 10s for both Mercedes drivers there. Moving on to the Ferraris, and um, we had Vettel and Leclerc. I'm both going to give them 9 out of 10. I thought it was a fantastic weekend for the Ferraris, um, and fantastic drives by both the drivers. No faults from any of them. Obviously, Vettel benefited massively um, from that undercut performance, but you know he was the one who uh, luckily got in the position. You generally don't pick the guy who's in the lead first the guy who's in the lead generally reacts to what the people do behind him and Vettel was trying to get the undercut on Hamilton and it just worked out perfectly that he managed to get the race lead from Charles Leclerc as well next up we have the Red Bulls and it was as a team not a great weekend for the Red Bulls because it was a weekend that they were coming to expect to do well at and um they yeah they finished 
comfortably the third best team. Uh, Verstappen did get on the podium, so I'm going to give Verstappen an 8 out of 10 for getting on the podium. But obviously this was massively benefited from the Mercedes strategy call, which put both Hamilton and Bottas behind in the hope that their fresher tyres would work later on in the race. But the safety cars stopped that opportunity. Albon, I gave him a 7 out of 10, considering it was... A solid performance um, for his first time out um, at the Singapore Grand Prix. It is a difficult track to get and it's only something that you learn and you get better at the more races that you have there. And he was competing more with the Mercedes rather than back with the McLaren. So he is doing a better job than Pierre Gasly. Following on from that, we have the Renaults and mixed fortunes for Hulk and Ricardo. Hulk could have had a very good race, um, but he had that collision with Sainz at the start. And I'm going to be critical of Hulk there. I think that was entirely his fault. And that was, yeah, a racing incident, but that was poor car placement by um, Nico Hulkenberg. So, yeah, that was poor from him. So, I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10 just purely for that incident because it could have been a lot better for him and Renault if he was able to avoid that clash at the start. But it was a solid race after that performance. Um, Daniel Ricciardo, uh, after obviously getting that disqualification um, from qualifying on the Saturday for that kind of microsecond peak in his MG UK. Um, yeah, very frustrating for him, but I thought he had a fantastic few laps getting through and then his race was only compromised with that clash with Giovinazzi. Um, but him himself, in terms of that drive around Singapore and the amount of overtakes that he made during the course of that race, I'm going to give Danny Rick an 8 out of 10. We next have McLaren and Carlos Sainz seems to be the cursed man. Again, another race where he's affected by something that is out of his control. And the thing out of his control this time was um, Nico Hülkenberg. His race was basically over from the point that he got that rear puncture and then it was really difficult in the pits to get the tyre off. Um, with the safety cars, he was able to finish, uh, I think it was 12th in the end. Um, but yeah, it... It was not a great race for Carlos Sainz, but again, out of his control. So I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10 because he did drive well to kind of keep himself in there because it must have been very tough um, keeping going after that early collision. Lando Norris, like Alexander Albon, it was his first time out at this circuit and he finished best to the rest. And after avoiding that Sainz and Hülkenberg um, collision there, he was able to maintain seventh position for the rest of the race. And yeah, it was a fantastic drive from the young British driver and again proving he is the best rookie uh, out of the batch who has come through. So at 8 out of 10 for Lando Norris. Next up we have Alphas and a mixed weekend. Giovinazzi again is outperforming Kimi Raikkonen, which is he is having a very good start to the second half of the season. So off the back of his points finish in Monza, he was driving very well here before having that collision with Ricardo that did compromise him. And for that, I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10 for the performance. And Kimi Raikkonen... Uh, had that crash with Daniel Kvyat that he took full responsibility for. Uh, got frustrated, I think, getting caught behind the back markers. He was having trouble overtaking cars on the circuit. And then, yeah, that clash with Kvyat took out his front left tyre. It's a 4 out of 10 for Kimi Raikkonen for me on this weekend. Then we have Toro Rosso. And mixed fortunes again for the drivers. Daniel Kvyat, who had performed so well and had been unlucky in the past couple of weeks... Uh, with incidents, had a bit of a nothing drive for me today and then obviously involved in that late collision with Kimi Raikkonen. So I'm going to give him a 5 out of 10. It was neither particularly negative from Daniel Kivet, obviously going out on Q1 on the Saturday, but it wasn't particularly a great drive either and he finished outside the point. So a 5 out of 10 for me. Then we have Pierre Gasly and Pierre Gasly is proving just how important it is to be in a car that suits your driving style and he is so much more confident in that Toro Rosso and it is another strong performance and this is his best performance to date since being back in that Toro Rosso car. Finishing just behind 
Um, Lando Norris in eighth position, and that means he's going to get an eight out of ten for the race. I thought, yeah, it was a very strong performance from the young French driver. Next up, we have Haas, the midfield team that continue to perform badly because they have no idea what's going wrong with their car. And the sooner the 2019 season ends for them, the happier they will be. They probably cannot wait to get to Abu Dhabi and just knock the season on the head. It has been terrible for them. Roman Grosjean, after being announced controversially as the 2020 driver, did not have a great weekend. He went out in Q1 on the Saturday and obviously was involved in that collision that put George Russell out of the race. Was not punished by stewards, but I think a lot of people... Um, uh, yeah, didn't think it was great placement by Roman Grosjean. It was a bit naughty from him. Did manage to beat his teammate Kevin Magnussen. Um, so that is going to give him a 3 out of 10, which could have been lower. But Kevin Magnussen unfortunately had a plastic bag on his front wing later on, which forced him to do an extra pit stop, which made him finish dead last. But up until that point and before the kind of number of safety cars that mucked up them a bit, he was... Um, fighting for the points which was a pretty good effort considering how poor that Haas car is so for me Kevin Magnussen gets a 7 out of 10. The penultimate team we are looking at here is the racing points and Sergio Perez again is having issues with that Mercedes engine and forced to retire from the race this time. Uh, very unlucky because again he was fighting in the points had a very strong race uh, considering that he had the five grid uh, drop penalty after qualifying after fitting a new gearbox um so yeah he gets a 7 out of 10 for me because it was not his fault that he retired and he was competing for the points up until that point he retired Lance Stroll this weekend kind of returned to normality it was not a circuit that he did well at again on the Saturday going out in Q1 again and had a bit of a nothing race other than that uh, going long on the first stint and being part of that pack of four of Garsley, Giovinazzi and Ricardo, who were the traffic that the leaders had to get through. Um, but yeah, uh, a bit of a nothing race for Stroll, a five out of ten, uh, just a solid drive, nothing too special, but nothing too bad either. Last and probably least, we have the Williams and Robert Kubica. It was nice to see him fighting and holding up some cars on the racetrack, but again, he was only not dead last because Magnussen having to put in that extra pit stop had a 5 out of 10. Um, Kibitza, he just hasn't been able to adapt to this new car and the Pirelli tyres. The Williams is a terrible car as it is, so he, he hasn't really done anything other than a 5 out of 10 all season. Then we have George Russell, um, Involved in that collision with Roman Grosjean, was performing better than the car was. Again, getting the best out of that car that he could. Not his fault that he was forced to retire. Um, for me, it is a 6 out of 10. Um, and yeah, those are my driver ratings. So I guess back to you, Chazza. Um, yeah, thanks again for having us on. And thank you, Mike, for that. And of course, it's great to have more new people on the channel and have different opinions because this channel, of course, is about opinions. And also, guys, don't forget to check out his channel. Link below in the description. He uploads plenty of F1 content, so don't forget to go and check that out and subscribe to him. But now that me and Mike have had our say, what do you guys think about the driver ratings for the 2019 Singapore Grand Prix? And what would you rate the drivers based on this Grand Prix? Let me know in the comments section down below. And also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. I will be back guys tomorrow at 12pm UK time for the preview and predictions for the 2019 Russian Grand Prix. So until then guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.